here unless you be breathed by your spirit. But if you breathe, you can bring forth something even greater than this is. We believe what you did 110 years ago was, a, was something of a major statement of your heart for the whole earth. Because you, your word says that you were to, we were to preach and that you would confirm it with signs and wonders. And William Seymour, the color line was washed away with blood and you set fire on his offering. Yes. And the tongue of fire went worldwide. Yes. Do it again in our day, yes. in our time, we pray in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. I go back to, I, I, I tell the story, if you've heard the story, just hear it again. <laughs> You know, ultimately, life is narrative. Yeah. And God tells stories through our lives. But it's, it's just glorious. That God has a story about our lives. I go back to uh, my pastor, 1982. We were in Maryland, and a Korean man had a dream of a black man saying, come to Los Angeles, there's going to be a great revival. Because of that dream, 12 of us moved to Los Angeles to see that revival. We thought it would happen immediately. Revivals never happen. <laughs> In fact, usually dreams become nightmares <laughs> before they get fulfilled. We went out there and we prayed for fasted for ten years. And instead of seeing uh, revival, we saw the riots. Rodney King, the horrifying beating, took place. The judges did is unimaginable that they didn't know the, the, the way they ruled. And there were prepared vessels in Los Angeles ready to strike the match yeah. of, 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 of riots. Yeah. And I'm watching the riots on TV weeping. And the Lord just speaks to my heart. What you were watching is revival in the negative. Because wow. I can find a few prepared vessels wow. and I can light the city on fire. On. In many ways, that was a defining moment. But I go back. Even back then, to 1984, 85, we moved to Pasadena because of a book that we were reading called Azusa Street. We didn't know where to go to, to fulfill that dream. But when we were reading the Azusa Street Revival by a man named Frank Bartleman, yeah. Frank Bartleman was a white man, intercessor, that moved in 1905 to Pasadena and fasted and prayed so much his wife thought he was going to die. And he was praying in Pasadena. And we were reading that, I was reading that book, and I can only say that it became a burning bush. Moses had a burning book. I had a burning bush. Because yeah. I could hear my name being called. And it, it was screaming inside of me when I was reading this book. And sometimes, you know, pay close attention to your tears, for your tears point you to your destiny. Wow. You know, God can give you a burning bush. I just was overwhelmed with this book, and I, and I just got a terrible, glorious burden for revival. And I didn't connect it so much back then to the black-white issue. But God has his ways of bringing us around. And uh, I fasted for days, and then one night I cried, give God, like I'd never prayed before, Lord, give me the mantle of Frank Bartleman. I want to read about revival. I want to see revival. I want my kids to, to yeah. live in historic yeah. revival. And one night, that, for two hours, I prayed like I'd never prayed, crying to God in my garage. The next day, a brother walks up to me and says, Lou, I had a dream last night, and in this dream, I saw a big black book, and the title said Revival. He said, I turned the inside of the cover, and I saw a guy's face, and his name was Frank Bartleman, and his face turned to your face. Oh. I know what the title deed of my life is. It's revival. Yeah, yeah. And I've been called to be an intercessor. Yeah, and so a few, a month or so later, I was in a women's glow meeting. I wasn't a woman, I wasn't a glow. <laughs> <laughs> I was a sponsor, I think. <laughs> and then at, at the end of the, at, at the end of the meeting, I'm just standing there all alone. Can you imagine why? <laughs> 
This African American lady walks up to me, you know, and she says, You know, in 1906, there was this black lady praying with this guy named Frank Barberman. She says, I feel like I'm that black lady looking for that bar. Wow. I said, Lady, we gotta talk. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to her church, Northwest Pasadena. I walked in there, sleeping bags all over the church. The women are spending seven days and seven nights in what they called shut in. The upper room is called uh, uh, Terry. Mm -hmm. They were shut in, pleading for the promises of revival. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I thought, this is the inheritance of the African American yeah. church. Yeah. Yeah. This is the inheritance of the Zeus. Yeah. So I've lived with this for many, many years, and of course, I, I don't know, I can't assume uh, uh, that it's of course, but. Uh, uh, I was praying in 1999 how, how can I turn America back to God and a woman came to me and she said I'll pay your salary this year because you're going to start something with the youth of America change the destiny of the nation in prayer and uh, as the story goes 400,000 gathered to fast and pray yeah. our first call in 2000 it's been 16 years of fasting and praying oh, the, 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 it, was, it started with a, with a dream in which not started there was one of them, a few thousand. <laughs> in the dream, I was overwhelmed with the impossibility of seeing America turn back to God. In the dream, a scroll rolled down before me. And I read, and he shall go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the rebellious to the wisdom of the righteous. That's how I read it in the scroll. I woke up out of this. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, what I'm pouring out in America is stronger than the rebellion. Um, it's a great word, except the fact is the call has not turned America back. In fact, in some ways, it feels like we're the worst shape we ever had. But we held a call in Berkeley. A group of young people gathered together and fasted and prayed for 50 days and 50 nights. And lived in a revival center, just lived there and prayed 50 days and 50 nights. And, and, uh, and I went to Berkeley because of the, the, the that's where the flashpoints of the, of the Black Panthers and the student revolution. Yeah. I purposely went there to say, God, break the rebellion. Yes, amen. And I was praying, God, has the call failed? I thought it was going to be like a, like a John the Baptist fasting and prayer movement, you know. And I felt the Lord speak to my heart. He said, if, and he said, if it truly was a John the Baptist movement, you can bet there's a Jesus movement coming. Yeah. Because the last word of John was not prepared the way of the Lord. It was, it behold the Lamb of God. Yeah. And I, I believe there's coming a mass beholding. Yeah. And people are going to be saved. Stadiums yeah. 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 And the last word of John was not prepare the way of the Lord. It says, when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And we have been praying there's coming a mass baptism of the Holy Spirit. We need a mighty way that sweeps into the inner cities, into the universities. And we are entering an era of evangelism and signs and wonders. But it doesn't happen. Acts 2 doesn't happen unless you have Acts 2.1. They were all together in one place and in one accord and suddenly out of heaven. That's the miracle of Azusa. The miracle of Azusa is not just the tongue of fire. The miracle of Azusa is what happens when the Holy Spirit unites his church and African Americans and Mexicans, they all came together and they got into the upper room together. So three years ago, I've seen stadiums be filled with fasting. I'm giving a backdrop. If you can hang with me for a little bit of time tonight. Because I feel, I feel I've feel got to tell this story. Because I think what's here tonight is the possible. The, the, the lump of leather that can fill the whole loaf. And when I say that, I'm coming from a prophetic experience I had in Detroit. The Lord gave me a dream. Go to the call, do the call in Ford Field in, in Detroit. People were saying, go outside the city limits. I said, no, we've got to go into the city limits. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Lewis, we've got to take the fight yeah. of fasting and prayer into the city limits. We have to go to Detroit. Yeah. And 
because of that word, we went to Ford Field. And I lived in the ghetto. I started with some folks here. We lived in the ghetto. And I lived, and I lived in a sleeping bag with a group of intercessors, black and white, for 40 days in an abandoned elementary school. We stood out on eight mile, black, white together, shoulder to shoulder, making a statement to the principalities of powers. This has got to be. I met with African American leaders. Can I just say, I don't understand, I don't understand the pain. I, I can't live in, this, in, in the challenge. I don't know the culture. I haven't suffered the profilers. I don't know all this. I lived in a little co cozy suburb. Except for 40 days. <laughs> <laughs> but I met pastor after pastor, and I'd say it was difficult for me because I didn't understand the culture. And we'd have, we'd have conversations, and they were challenging for me. Particularly one uh, a, a conversation with one of the major leaders. And, but we worked it through. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm walking out of the meeting to the restroom. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the Lord whispers to me. And I know it's the Lord because I would never think of it. And he said, you are kneading the dough. Because I want one loaf. I want one loaf. And that was, there was beginning a storyline that, that goes way back to the Frank Bartleman story. It was a black man and a white man intercessor yeah. Yeah. that came together. Really, thousands of intercessors were praying for Los Angeles in 1906. I actually believe that that story with Bartleman was like, like the first chapter of a storyline that means to have an ending. Yeah. That God gives us chapters early on that he can fulfill. How many of you have ever read a novel where something is introduced early? And then down the road, suddenly it pops up again and brings the whole story together. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm in that moment right now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I, uh, where to go from here? So, so in, I, I've got to lay this foundation. Uh, uh, my life was sh changed by a book called Shaping History to Prayer and Fasting yeah. by a man named Derek Prince. Yeah. Don't read it. <laughs> It'll mess your life up. <laughs> Any book on fasting will mess your life up. In 1999, God really, actually began my, my fasting. And I'm going to say my, I'm a miserable fasting faster. One time I was fasting, for those who haven't heard the story, I cheated on my fast, and then I called. <laughs> yogurt and Snuck chips. yogurt and chips. Looking at my wife was looking. The next day I was in our 24 hour house of prayer. And a prophetic intercessor lady walks in. Scared lady. She said, I had a dream last night. And you're sitting right here in the house of prayer. I said, Oh, yes. She, but I was very disappointed. Because you're supposed to be fasting, but you were eating yogurt and chips. <laughs> Several things converged, and, and for you to understand my storyline right in, into St. Louis, you can't. It, 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 I have to tell this, and it's just going to take me a little time. Amen. Go ahead. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I'll, uh, evening, I fly back for 500 pastors meeting in the Memorial Coliseum of Los Angeles. Wow. Dude, and I'll tell you the story, but we feel we're coming to the day where so many are going to get saved. Yeah. And God is going to give us a third great awakening. Yeah. He's going to, we, we, we believe he's going to do this. And part of the reason that God gives me the stories I tell, I tell you is to create faith. Yeah. Yeah. And we can move together yeah. in, this, in this journey. Yeah. This is 1999. Mm -hmm. uh, 1999, uh, I... A woman came to me, a Peruvian housewife. What's co so cool about dreams, if you have a dream and can give it to the big, the, uh, big mouth, you can change the world with your dream when you're a housewife. 
<laughs> I've told her dream all over the world. <laughs> and it creates movement. Yeah. And she said, I saw this woman in, uh, in this dream, this woman dressed in Roman war armor, heaping up huge waves in a body of water. In the dream, people were swimming in those waves but couldn't get to their destinies. She said, but in the dream, an angel appeared to her and said, the only thing that can break the power of the Spirit is 40 days of fasting, like Jesus. Wow. She says, it's a meaning, meaning to you. I said, yeah, they're on the state seal of California. There's a woman dressed in Roman war. Her name's Minerva. I'm not looking for demons everywhere, but sometimes you've got to put it together because God talks us to us in creative ways. The, the Israel counterpart would be like the spirit of Jezebel. Yeah, right. And we're not talking about a woman. I'm talking about a spirit, yeah, yeah, yeah. a worldwide spirit that dominates culture, yeah, yeah. seduces our bond servants into sexual immorality, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it parades itself in philosophy and education. Yeah. And I said, yeah, there's a, on the state seal, I, I think there's a spirit seeking to keep California from its destiny. Well, I've been an intercessor for 20 years at that time for California. Uh, and so, uh, so you know, so I, uh, I lived with this dream for three years. And I'm flying home from the call, from the call in Korea. I'm coming back to, uh, to mobilize for the call sac Sacramento. And, um, I mean, San Francisco, where Minerva is seated on the bay. I'm flying home and I get this intense desire to do 40 days of fasting like Jesus. And I'm thinking, I, I, got, I just wanted to do it. <laughs> Anytime you get tempted to fast, you can bet the devil's not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this, this thought came to me, I've never done 40 days on water and I'm thinking I'm going to die. I mean, literally, I have this wrestling match in my soul. I'm going to die. I think, God, I can't die. I, I want to do this fast, but I can't die. i got seven kids. <laughs> and the Lord speaks to me, do you love California enough to die for? Wow. And I realized that he was moving me beyond prayer to a dimension of laying down my life yeah. to move demonic powers. Because yeah. demonic powers are challenged only by the death of Christ. Yeah. Wow. That's where he breaks the power of the Spirit. That's where his Father forgive them for they know not what they do. Breaks the principalities and powers. And I said, God, I hope I love you enough. I love you for enough again. You're going to confirm this to me. Now I'm going to die. I fly home from San Francisco to L.A. and I begin to fast. On my 50th birthday, I meet with a young man who was married to the housewife that had the dream. I didn't tell him anything. And he said to her, he said to me, first words, my wife just had another dream last night. In the dream, a woman appeared to her and said, the old, uh, Louis fasting the fast she dreamed about three years ago. He thinks he's going to die, but he will not die. Wow. At that moment, I knew that I wasn't on a good idea. I was in a heavenly invitation yeah. Yeah. To, to, to do something to shift things in fasting. And so every day, this is what I did. And uh, uh, from Revelation chapter uh, 2, I have this against you, that you tolerate the woman Jezebel, mm -hmm. who seduces my bond favorites into sexual memory. I'll give her the time to repent. She wouldn't do it. The church will know that I'm the one that searches the hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. But to those who overcome, I give them authority yeah. over the nations. Yeah. And I thought, oh, wow, what? there is a battle over that. But if you overcome, you get authority. So I did this fast, and every day on water, except for a couple of times, I cheated a little bit. Revelation 2. God's mercy. He doesn't even see sometimes. Am I in the right place? I suddenly said, Yeah, I'm in the right place. And every day I would say, Lord, cleanse me. Of all inward toleration of Jezebel, because I knew I can't bind what binds me. Yeah, exactly. And every day I would position myself in the spirit before that Jezebel spirit. Stay and I tuned. would 
not in the boasting in any of my strength or the fast, because I got nothing. I got nothing to hold on to. The only thing that we can stand on in terms of breaking through in the heavens is the victory of yeah, Christ. Exactly. I took my stand and I said, I, I just take my stand in the face of that. I, would, I, said, I just declare the victory of the cross yeah, over Jezebel. Yeah. And this is controversial, but it just, it's just the way it is. Yeah. This is what happened. And for 31 days, I was in this fast, taking that stand, and I was in San Diego, where a book was written 70 years ago, right now, called Atomic Power Through Prayer and Fast. Yeah. It spread throughout the world that healings, healing revivals break out in 47. Latter rain outpourings break out. Bill Bright and Bill Graham yeah. rise to the, to, to the front. A whole evangelistic explosion takes place. Outpourings of the Gentiles and Israel becomes a nation in 48. There was a worldwide fast that released a worldwide outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's Joel 2 after the fast. I'll pour out my spirit on your sons and daughters. And so I'm preaching on this, and I said, This is your in, in San Diego, this is your inheritance to ship the nations through prayer and fasting. Amen. That night at one o'clock in the morning, Hotel Circle, San Diego, I'll never forget it. I have the most liberating, powerful dream of my life. But it was more than a dream, it was an encounter with God. And in the dream, I, I found myself flying over California roaring the victory of the cross of Jezebel. It was the most liberating encounter filled with joy. I, and I wake up roaring as I was in the dream. And I know something about prayer. I, I've just broken through. We need to not have prayer meetings to feel good. We need prayer meetings for breaking through. That's what, they, that's what they're doing in the shadows. So that morning, I fly out of this, at San Diego airport. I fly to St. Louis. As I'm flying out, I'm in the window, and I look out, and there's a big mural of Charles Limber on the wall of the airport. And I'm looking at it, I said, I know that, that guy, I mean, I mean, he flew the spirit of St. Louis. I didn't know that's the name of the airport. It's at Lindbergh Airport. And it's cool. So I fly, I'm flying out there. And as I'm flying, I have one of those moments where you know God kisses you in his love. Tells you who you are. And he said, my name's Lewis. He says, you're St. Louis to me. And you're flying in the spirit of St. Louis. And I just wept on the plane. Didn't know really what it meant. It sure is nice. <laughs> I, I, I get up I get, I get to St. Louis and brother picks me up and he says Lou I had a dream of you last night at 3 o'clock in the morning it's 2 hour time difference he's dreaming the same time I'm dreaming wow. and he says I heard a voice he says because Lou's been faithful on this fast I've given him authority over Jezebel into the nations wow. and wherever the call goes I'll establish my house of God and when, I, when that happened, I, I just, I, I, you know, you know, the, you know what happens. You just freak out. Because <laughs> I knew the Lord was pointing that something was going on in this moment is much bigger than you are. Yeah. I fly to St. Louis. I tell the story. Mike Bickle from the House of Prayer is here. And he says, this doesn't surprise me because the first place that I pastored was in this building right here. And he said, and I built it on the book, Atomic Power Through Prayer and Fast. And we're in that building right now. And I don't think it's an accident. I think we are in a divine moment. I look up the spirit of St. Louis because I don't know. I find out the plane was built in San Diego. And the first flight was to St. Louis. Because St. Louis is a flyer city. I'm tapping into your inheritance and our inheritance together. That there's something about fasting and prayer that can break through for revival and overcoming demonic powers. 
And when I looked it up, and it's, it, that's the flight, and, and from St. Louis, and, and the Lord spoke to me. What Charles Lindbergh did in the natural, you're going to do it in the spiritual. Because you're going to raise up an army of men and women who will win battles in the heavens, like yeah. Daniel's 21-day fast, for breakthroughs of principalities and powers. So that becomes the backdrop of what I'm saying, that there, there is God's original intention, but there are powers of darkness that seek to hinder. Yes, yes. I went on that 40-day fast. Little did I realize that that fast would issue forth words of authority. The day after the call, we had a dream that the Jesus. governor of California was in a stadium and had to submit to every word we were speaking. Because wow. he was passing laws that were bad news. And the day after the call became something called the recall. And California up and up impeached. We believe two stadium gatherings and 40 days of fasting through the state shook something in yeah. the that was fulfilled when the church united in prayer and in fasting. I'm saying there is an atomic weapon Amen, that too. has to Lots be used by the church in this hour because of the race conflicts, the racism, the things that are going on. You can't deal with this in politics. You've got to deal with this thing in the head of the started the 40-day collegiate fast today for revival on college campuses. I, I, I don't bring all the answers. In fact, I don't have answers. How do you heal the race issue? For one thing, I think we, as Anglo folk, have to step back and make sure we're walking in the feet, in the shoes of African Americans before we make our political statements and not enter into their pain. I'm talking to guys who experience profiling men of God. We don't even have a clue. Not only that, I talk to police guys who, uh, that have said, that the police actually do mark African Americans in there. But see, we don't know that coming from our perspective. So we're immediately making judgments on the basis, of course, the cops are right. And again, I'm not trying to make, I'm simply saying we don't live in one another's worlds. And we've got to learn. I had, we have been given a dream that we, we cannot deal with the issue of abortion unless we first of all walk in the sandals of the Native Americans. I took a team of 70 young people because of that dream through the South into Montgomery, Birmingham, seeking to feel the pain, praying, and then we walked 750 miles to Tahlequah, the capital of the Cher Cherokee, to cry out to God for breakthrough and healing. It's an amazing story. I realize I've been on this on this race thing a whole long time, don't know anything, but I do know this, that God has answers from heaven. And it's so crazy after that trail of tears, that guy Bob Jones, we met him because of a dream at the time, the trail of tears, he calls us. And he says, at the end of that, he calls us, he says, because those kids walked 750 miles, to walk in the sandals of the Native American to understand their culture. Tell them they now have authority over the flu that's threatening 35,000 people. Wow. On December wow. 21st, he said, have those kids rebuke the flu. Wow. We gathered on December 21st to rebuke the flu. Wow. Didn't feel anything, we just did. But we fasted and we did the word. A month later in the USA Today wow. newspaper, Front page, all a flu appears to be on decline. Yeah. We turn the inside of the cover, shows a graph, it begins to decline on December 21st. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I, well, the reason I'm saying this is, is if you get, if you win the battle over race, yeah. Yeah. if Charlie, you, you can to come forgive to your brother, yeah. yeah. you, so. you get authority in the and you can fast, fast, you can get authority to break things way beyond what we can yeah. do. I think we've come to the place of the flyers. We just held the call in Berkeley uh, in, in 2014. Again, mostly Asian kids gathered for 50 days, 70 of them. Some took off school from their universities. That's a miracle. 
when Asian kids take off school. <laughs> I'm just telling you, just telling you. But they, but they sensed it was a divine moment. <laughs> and it was when Ebola had exploded off the charts. I just seen the graph. Wow. And we did this, and the, the, the Lord just let us rebuke Ebola. I've just seen the graph. September, it exploded on the charts. Ebola. A young man, Korean guy, did 40 days of fasting. 25 year old did 40 days of fasting on water. Wow. The, the Tuskegee Airmen are coming. Yes, come on. And on that, he found an article that it began to decline, and I've seen the graph, it declined immediately off the charts on that very beginning. Now that's subjective, but that's my faith. Amen. Because I saw it in the Paul Sacramento where a group of kids in Elk Grove fasted for 21 days and they prayed 21 days in Elk Grove right before the, um, right before the stadium gathering. Uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, the Call Sacramento. After the Call Sacramento, these, these kids went into travail for souls. It was supernatural. I was with them for hours. And they wailed because of people going to hell. Soon after that, we get a report of a young Hispanic man that had five different Christian clubs in that city with 35 kids in those clubs. Within one month, they were having five to 600 wow. Muslims getting saved. Yes. Wow. Something had broken. Yeah. And I think he's restoring the ancient weapons yes. of, of, of pursuit. Now, I, again, I go back, I'm just building up to this moment. I go back to 2000, we did the Trail of Tears 2003, 2004. We gathered at Colorado Springs, about 50 to 70 kids gathered for 50 days and 50 nights. So what, we, what we've been doing is instead of having, there are times you have to have prayer meetings faithfully, but there are times of what's in, in military, you would call it concentration of force, yeah. where you throw everything at that place to break the line. And the Lord had given to us that we, uh, that we were to, uh, to pray for the ending of abortion. And we did it in an African-American church because the Lord was speaking to us. It's a black and white house. Yep. And by the way, the bloodshed of the unborn is a real issue that fuels the demonization of the culture. But so is the blood of the African-American young people killed on the streets. All of that blood is fueling a culture that demands an answer, but the church <laughs> overcomes him by the blood of the Lamb, yeah. the word of their testimony. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, uh, can you remind me to go back to, uh, to Colorado, but I don't want to forget this. I made a covenant on the Trail of Tears with a young man named Will Ford. Not that young. <laughs> yeah, we made a covenant that we would seek uh, the ending, of, we would we, we covenant to go for the ending of abortion and the healing of the black or white issue. Wow. You know, we don't know what we're doing, but that's what we felt led to do. And uh, he's a fasting, crazy guy. I love him. And he's, he's an African-American guy. We were going to preach the next morning in Dexter Baptist Church where Martin Luther King wow. preached. Wow. And that night he had a dream. In the dream. Wow. In the dream, we drive up to a hotel to pick up Martin Luther King. He gets out of this, comes out of the hotel, and he's carrying a white bag with black hands. And in the dream, suddenly before he gets in the car, he turns the bag upside down and violently empties out, empties out the contents, throws the bag to the ground. And my friend Will runs to pick it up as a souvenir. And Martin Luther King grabs him by the shoulders and says, don't you pick up that bag. And God gave us the interpretation. And again, I we should see how many black leaders probably he should be telling the dream. But I am. And the Lord gives the interpretation. It was a white bag with black handles. It's how the blacks handle the white baggage. Yeah. Mm. If you can forgive us, yeah. you get authority to lead the nation yeah. in the kingdom. Yeah. Because those who are the oppressed, those, when they say, Father, forgive them, they are lose peace of God. I believe the end. I don't. We need 
dialogue. We need to confront yeah. the issue. But more than that, only the church can save this nation. Yeah. Only a united church can heal a divided nation. Yeah. Yeah. That William Seymour and Azusa suffered so much racism, oh, yeah. but he wasn't looking just for civil rights. He was looking for an open heaven. Yeah. And that's what he got. Yeah. I believe God... What 92 you were speaking to me, I believe we're back in the same year time when race riots are out of our streets. With welcome to Ferguson. But I believe that God is going to unite his church and that the African American voice can actually lead the prayer of history into a new day of forgiveness and release. I, that's all that's all, all I can I don't know how to answer all the questions. So I'll tell this. It was there in. Um, um, I won't tell it. It was an amazing story of a breakthrough uh, in Colorado that led me on a journey. In that gathering, there was a young man. He had been my assistant when I fasted those 40 days. He became a fasting man. Gave, God gave him a dream, and now he's leading a worldwide movement called Exodus Cry for the breaking of sex trafficking. Tell you what, Elijah's 40 day fast releases Elijah's double potions. I just wrote down on the plane today the sons, the assistants I've had, have all gone into these fasts and they're leading major ministries. Nobody's that got a hold of God. Which brings me to the Azusa story that, that won't go maybe 15 minutes if you could just stay with me. So I'm in Berkeley. And six years ago, I wrote a letter to the African-American uh, to African American leaders addressing President Obama and the issue of bloodshed, of abortion. I thought I was being a good prophet. <laughs> the, the, the problem is, I had never walked and identified with the community that's known pain in ways, in, in incredible ways. And I was insensitive to the moment. Uh, uh, and because of that, I had a major disagreement with a man that leads the Azusa Street organization. His name is Fred Berry, African American man in LA. I'm fasting in Berkeley, and the Lord speaks to me call Fred Berry and get reconciled to him. He tried to reconcile with me, I just put it off. I make a phone call. And over the phone, we get reconciled. Amen. Wow. The whole story I tell you starts with that reconciliation. Wow. It wasn't asking to be making reparations. It was, it, was, it was just the good old gospel. Forgive me, brother. Yeah. I was wrong. I was insensitive. And he said, Lou, I forgive you. And then he said, the call of Zeus Street is still waiting for me. Wow. <laughs> I didn't ever know it was waiting for me in the first place. <laughs> I just knew my barman calling, and when he said it, it jumped. Mm, yeah. That are we moving from the John to the Jesus days? Mm. Now the Lord of the Holy Spirit. Because three years ago, 2011, these guys walked into my living room. These Y-wimers, they're like dwarves. <laughs> Walked into my hobbit hole. <laughs> and they said there's coming a shift to the call. And it will not be just fasting and prayer, but the proclamation of the gospel. Right. Signs and wonders and stadiums will be filled. Wow. And Billy Graham's mantle's coming on the nation. Yeah. And it shocked me the word. For two days we just gathered together to pray. And as we're closing up, suddenly a prophet calls my friend from Nashville. And says, do you know where Lou Imbel is? She's in the meeting. Tell him I had a visitation last night. Tell him the Lord said there's coming a shift to the call. And it will not be just fasting and prayer. But the proclamation of the gospel. Signs and wonders. Yeah. And stadiums will be filled. And Billy Graham's mantle is coming on the nation. <laughs> and, oh my God. and I thought, Lord, that has got to be you. I've seen stadiums filled. I gathered 4,500 kids. We did. Rustin Carlson, 1997. We gathered them. 
And they fasted for three days. Stadiums would be filled with young people, a John the Baptist movement fasting and prayer. I've seen that answer. And now for the last three years, I've been praying, Lord, not John, but Jesus, come on. Yeah. Give, us, give us an awakening. Give us an outpouring. Yeah. Yeah. I make this phone call. We get reconciled. This word sticks in my heart. I'm praying, fasting, there in Berkeley. And the thought comes to me, and I know it comes from heaven. Look up April 9, 2016, the 110th anniversary of Azusa. It's a Saturday. In other words, you could hold the call on that day. I was thinking, wow, that's cool. Now, I had three people on my staff at the time. Don't have any money. And I'm thinking, if I do something, I'm going to be small and safe. <laughs> God never calls us to do anything small right. and safe. He wants us to dream and ask largely. And so I called my friend of 31 years. He'd just been a prophet to me. And made it with you, with you, with you. Anyway, he said, Luke, you remember my dream in 2013 when we do our yearly 40 day fast? I said, No, I don't remember it. We do it, we, we do it every year from March 1st to April 9th because it's Azusa's wow. Azusa anniversary. And we pray for laborers to go into the harvest. Yeah. I didn't realize till last year that April 9th is also the anniversary of Appomattox. Yeah. Wow. I say God wants to end the soul. Yes. Come on. So he can get us. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think God wants to empty our bags. What color is your bags? Who's the pastor? Who's the person in your church that betrayed you? Are you, are you holding any slaves wow. in your own heart? Wow. I said, he said, Luke, I had this dream during the fast. And in this dream, I had to buy, I, I, can't move it, I had to buy five cents of five plane tickets. And the only airlines that we could fly was United Airlines. Yeah. And he said, I knew that the church was being called into unity like it never. Yeah. And we had to fly. Yeah. Which to me is fasting. <laughs> but in the dream, he was concerned he'd missed the expiration date. So he looks it up. And the check of the ticket, and it expires in 1,080 days. He wakes up, looks up 1,080 days. Guess what day it is? April 9, 2016, the 110th anniversary of this history revival. I begin to, I said, Lord, I'm going to do something on that day. Yeah. And at, at that point, I, uh, I went to the Memorial Coliseum and claimed it. I don't know why. It seats 110,000 people. And but I just felt led, be careful what you claim. <laughs> I claim this. And, and um, a gal came, a gal, a gal from, uh, from uh, uh, Washington State said, I had a dream. I had a dream I saw a big, foot, a big stadium, it was both a football field and a baseball field. And she said, it was so vivid, I woke up and I Googled to see if any Stadiums in America were both the Super Bowl and the World Series. She said, there's only one. It's the Memorial Coliseum. I think you're supposed to call, hold the call Azusa Street there. And I, at that time, I'm very shocked. <laughs> so, Lord, what do you want me to do? I, I knew the cost of a stadium. I've done it before. It's overwhelming. I said, God, if we're going to do this, I've got to find somebody that does signs and wonders. <laughs> I've done fasting, but I've not done that many signs and wonders. In fact, the only person that's ever done signs and wonders was Jesus. Yeah. But he sure used Bill Johnson. <laughs> I have a bizarre, I, I couldn't meet with him at a bizarre meeting in, um, a bizarre meeting in uh, London. I tell him the story, and he says, Luke. He says, I'm canceling South Africa. We're going to throw the whole movement across to, meet, to pray, go in for a new day of signs and wonders like we've never seen. Can I say, I believe that God is going to heal every matter of sickness and disease. I believe the powerful realm of faith is going to open in the body of Christ. It's 70 years since that massive fast of atomic power. We're calling for the next three years. A whole movement. I just had a dream. I was laying my hands on Bill Johnson, crying out for the extraordinary miracles of Acts 19. That there was prayer behind this movement. We need it in the inner cities. We need it in our streets. Miracles. Call. Whatever you know, I'm not preaching to you. 
Maybe. <laughs> so finally, I get thrown out. I had to make. I had to. I, I, either I was going to be just a dream, or I was going to move toward a dream. I went to the Memorial Coliseum, it's USC's football field. I went with their officials, and the USC people said, "Yes, this is the place where the first Super Bowl was held." Fifty years ago, it's Jubilee. Come on, come on. Fifty years ago, 1967, January. Come on. And 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 they said, and the, and Vince Lombardi was the coach of the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I've got a couple of wows there. Yeah. <laughs> That's how most people react, but for me, it was shock and awe because 20 years before this. We were in an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, 1995, in Mott Auditorium in Pasadena. An amazing pouring went six nights a week for nine months, wow. carrying it on for three years. People from all over the world wow. came and got touched by the glory of God. Wow. The presence of the Lord. Jesus would walk into the building, 3,000 seat auditorium, old revival barn, and it smelled of fragrance, of roses. It was like heaven had come. People would. Uh, just an amazing moment. But one night in particular, I lived across the street. These two 11-year-old Asian gals were in my auditorium with their mom, and they were caught up in the four hours of visions of heaven. Wow. They, they called me. I could hardly understand them. They were so excited. I walked over. I ran over, and I recorded for four hours wow. as they described the heavenly realm. Wow. But at one point, the one thing that stood out more than anything in that four hours was what happened when they begin to get her crying out, Mott's too small, Mott's too Amen. small, stadiums will be filled. There's Vince Lombardi in heaven. I said, Vince Lombardi, do you know who he is? You know, we don't know who he is, but he's got a football helmet on in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> These stories are, are, are funny, but they're actually to create faith. Yes. Because for 20 years I've been praying, is there coming a Super Bowl for the church? Wow. Wow. For 20 years I've been asking God, why was this Lombardi in their visions? Yes. I walked home that night, walked into my house, and immediately my wife's contraction started. My daughter, Gloria, was born. And I felt there is a connection for something is being born. Yes. Yes. With the unity of the body of Christ, we must fly united. Yes. Just like what happened at Azusa. And so, after that meeting, I went to Bonnie Bray Street, where the Azusa Street Revival began. That night, on the 109th anniversary, jam-packed, every ethnic group getting there praying at 11 o'clock at night, and I prayed, Lord, where can I hold up and fast 40 days for 40 years of my life in God? I was saved in the Jesus movement in 1975. I wanted to fast 40 days uh, uh, for the 40 years of my life. You know, just, we do these stupid things. <laughs> for me to hold up is to move from my house where there's a fridge break and get away from the fridge break. <laughs> I'm walking out I, I, at 11 o'clock at night, and this African-American intercessor, he's been praying for 10 years at the gravestone of William Seymour, crying out that that mantle would be released to you. And he says, Lou, let me walk out with you. See, I had a dream two nights ago. I, I need to tell you the dream. In the dream, I was telling my wife, Lou's looking for a place to hole up and fast 40 days. Wow. And he's going to fast on the corner of Jefferson and Hoover in this dream, in the Methodist building or USC on the campus of USC. Because of this, I was so amazed. I moved into an office up in the top of that Methodist building. And I lived there and fasted for 40 days with a group, uh, not a great fast, but it, it was a great fast. Because <laughs> fasting is not how you do with your fast, it's your breakthrough into faith. Yeah. This time coming not up by prayer and fast. Yeah. But in the middle of that fast, an amazing thing took place there. We were holding nightly prayer meetings. A guy comes in and he says, did you know that there's a United Airlines jet on the campus of USC, and it's facing the stadium. Wow. It is, I, I've got pictures, I, I want to, there's a United Airlines jet that's facing the Memorial Coliseum. Wow. I think he's crying out. Yeah. It's time to fly United. Yeah. 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 Well, I 
finally had to make a decision to go by faith. I didn't have faith to raise the finances. I'm not here taking an offering. Good news. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have faith but three years before I had prayed when I moved to Pasadena if you want me to move to Pasadena from Kansas City you got to buy me a house I can't afford California and I get a phone call and a lady said uh, uh, you know I bought, I bought you a house I'm buying you a house I know you're moving to California and uh, a landmark Pasadena house she bought me a house bought a house and it, 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 it's a very beautiful home. And now I'm not telling you this to boast. My board has asked me to tell this story. Lest people think of just simply being presumptuous. The Lord spoke to me at that time and said, sell the house and buy the field for Matthew 13. It's your moment of your book, Revival and Frank Martin. Wow. And I, I had to go to my wife and ask her and my kids, because I said, this is, we don't have savings. We don't have uh, Social Security built up. Uh, I don't think there is any Social Security. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and my kids, my wife said, let's do it. My kids said, Dad, I said, this is your inheritance. The kids said, Dad, we have a spiritual inheritance. <laughs> Sell the house. You know God will provide for us. Whatever the case. So through a series of events, we sold the house. And we're well on our way to buying the field. Because I think it's a field of dreams. I think it's God's dreams. Yeah. 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 I've come here to St. Louis because I believe oh. this moment I was talking with Dean. I have had such difficulty connecting with the African American leaders in Los Angeles. <clears throat> and part of this, I think, is just our history. I think part of it, part of it is been there and done that. We just get jaded, and uh, you know, it's another event. Well, the last thing I want is another event. Yeah. We've always connected the calls with forty days of fasting or twenty, because we're going for a dynamic breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I came here to the place of the flowers, and I said to Dean, I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get to the African-American leaders, but there's a new breed. Yeah. There's a new breed that can empty the bag yeah. Yeah. and forgive us for the baggage we yeah. have. Yeah. There's a new breed of William Seymour. Yeah. Hmm. That can actually lead us out of this darkness. Yeah. Again, I don't, I don't have the answers how to deal with our cities. We do want to do something called adopt a cop, adopt, adopt a block. And so was this ministry where people are praying for the cops and they're praying for the, the blocks. Bring them together through the intercessions of the saints. And we're pondering these things. And... I just felt, I said to Dean, if we could, if we could gather a, a company, men and women, who can do business with God, and can lead us into a new day, maybe they can mobilize 5,000 African Americans to stand with us on that day. And it's just, I had a dream, and I'm soon done, I had a dream a month ago, I woke up five times, whether it's a dream, a voice, I, I, I mean, Jeremiah 34, 8. Jeremiah 34, 8. Five times, Jeremiah 34, 8. I wake up, I go to the scripture, and it's this. And they made a covenant to proclaim liberty to their slave. It's in the context when Babylon had surrounded Jerusalem, the prophets had already said, it's too late. You're going to judgment. You're going to Babylon. Wow, God. And yet at the last moment, the wicked king gathers the people and they all make a covenant to proclaim liberty to their slaves. Yeah. Do you know what language is that? That's Leviticus 25. 
in the year of Jubilee, proclaim liberty. On the anniversary of Azusa, proclaim liberty. On the anniversary of Appomattox, let go of your slaves. Let go of those who betrayed you. Let go of those who took your money from you. Freedom. God wants to break the power of the accuser of the brethren. But he can't do it if we are agents of the accuser of the brethren. By pointing our finger at different groups. And looking at their weaknesses and failures. Rather than looking at who Christ has called them to be. Looking at the color of their skin. Being jaded by history. Can we just. Bust through all of this and begin to know one another according to the Spirit. It may be completely against your experience or our experience. Can we move to fly and unite? I believe that's what God's saying. I on that day, I want to find a handful of men and women. 110,000 I'd like to find. Who can actually make it covered. And move heaven to release and forgive everyone that's hurt. The interesting thing is the Babylonian army withdrew their siege. If you go read it, when they make a covenant, our cities are being sieged. Yeah, yeah, but maybe right. if we make a covenant to let go of our slaves yeah. and, and, and believe even beyond our own experience and bless, I have a feeling something's going to shift. That's, I'm not going for a stadium event. I'm going for a breakthrough. Yeah. 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 And from March 1st through April 9th, we're calling for 40 days of fasting. I didn't get an amen on that one. Well, there's other 40-day fasts. You can pick and choose. It's all across the nation. This one goes right through Easter. Maybe you get raised from the dead. <laughs> And I just did something very terrifying. I called another fast. <laughs> but what if this company would say, we're going to go after this 40 days and we would cleanse ourselves yeah. Yeah, yeah. from any racist spirits. Yeah. 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 We would cleanse ourselves from our language of speaking against other churches. Yeah. Yeah. We'd cleanse ourselves so that we could get a place of authority. What if we yeah. took a, yeah. a stand and we would declare the victory of the cross over racism. Yeah. Wow. I think he gave me that in 2002 to give me an example. And that if one guy did that, what if the body of Christ would do that? We may blow something open. And God release an authority for Jesus' history. I, I told you at the beginning of this meeting, you have to judge this. It's not all the answers. J.D. has all the <laughs> this, this has been the battle of my life doing this, but I want to tell you the good news. God has released finances in the most amazing ways. I think he's sending fire on the offering because it's time. Would you stand with me? I want to pray. I think... That in the year of Jubilee, actually, when Jesus said, Father, forgive them and know not what they do, he released a Jubilee every day since. Yeah, yeah. When he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to proclaim liberty. Yeah. In, yeah. in Luke 4, 18. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to build go on this journey with me because I'm just, I'm asking you, I'm, as I'm praying, Lord, who do I need to get right with? What youth pastors? I've heard. What about friends that when they got in trouble, I ignored them? I know the Holy Spirit is going to move right through this place right here. Yes. We've got to fly united. He is saying we must fly united. That means well, we might have to, to lay aside some pretty treasured doctrines. Right. Except Jesus Christ. Father, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come. And, and maybe this meeting, not large in the eyes of people, but 
Lord, to the eyes of God this next day, yeah. that God, this could be a turning point in history. Give us riots rather than, give us revival rather than race riots. Find a few prepared vessels who can empty their baggage, black and white and Hispanic. I know we have to find one another more than saying sorry at a stadium. I don't know what to do, but I'm thinking, God, what I do have, I'm going to give. What, what is the call? Blesses Los Angeles City to help with the gangs issues. We're just saying, Lord, whatever you want us to do. I'm asking you, would you consider praying and coming to a system? Having prepared yourself and fasted with us for breakthroughs. Jesus. Would you consider mobilizing? I've asked God to give us 10,000 African I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just saying, Lord, is it time for a is it time for Barnabas fastings and Seymour's fastings? Father, I pray that you would stir men and women, Lord, to this spiritual breakthrough yes. that leads to breakthrough on the earth. Yes. I'm asking for the spirit of St. Louis to come on this company. Here, where Ferguson was the flashpoint to raise up something that can win and affect the whole nation or launch that spirit here of reconciliation and forgiveness. Over the next weeks, Lord, cleanse us from bitterness, from betrayal. Forgive those we've held in sleep. I pray for the release of the grace of fasting. This ancient inheritance of the church of Jesus Christ. Release the Jesus fast. It releases the Jesus movement. Yes. Signs and wonders and miracles. Father, forgive me for any insensitivities that I carry, that I, even in that, when I communicate. And I pray that you would help people look beyond the vessel and hear the intent of your heart. Over this next day, launch something that shifts. Let's get the revival in Jesus' name. Yes. I want to thank you.